In the previous video, we worked with the RCM color management system so we can stay in scene referred space. We can also work with the ACES color management system to use scene referred space. And we'll give that a try here. ACES, A-C-E-S, stands for Academy Color Encoding System. And this was designed to be an industry standard for color. It covers the entire process for filmmaking, from image capture to editing, the addition of VFX, to presentation, archiving, and designed to be future-proof for future remastering. So let's go ahead and activate ACES. Down to my project settings, color management, I'll change the color science to one of the two ACES variations. There's ACES CC and ACES CCT. They're similar, however, the ACES CCT has what's called a toe in the tonal curve, which is similar to the logarithmic tonal curve of motion picture film. So if you're used to working with logarithmic footage, in particular motion picture film, it might be preferable to work with ACES CCT. Also, ACES CCT is sometimes necessary for certain platforms, such as Netflix. So let's select that. When you do that, you get an ACES version menu. You can see what versions are supported by Resolve. In general, the latest version will support the widest range of camera color spaces, so we'll leave it set to ACES 1.1. You also get an input device transform and an output device transform menu. The input menu affects all incoming clips, although you can set those individually. So I'll leave this set to no input transform. The output device transform affects the final output. So I'll go ahead and select my desired output. And this could be digital cinema, so one of the P3s, or perhaps we'll just go ahead and use Rec. 709. I'll go ahead and save that, and then we'll be in the ACES system. Let's import some footage. You can import more than one clip at a time, so I'll control click these two shots. Open them. And here we have an Alexa LF shot and a Red One Mysterium shot. I'll right mouse button click over the Alexa shot. And you'll see there's a new menu that appears, and that's the ACES input transform menu. For the Alexa clip, I can just select Alexa. And then the proper contrast returns. Let's take a look at the red shot. Right mouse button click. This one's a little different. There is no ACES menu. So what's happening there? Well, once again, the Alexis shot is a ProRes shot, so it's been compressed. The red shot, however, is a raw shot. It's in the raw format, which means it's the data from the camera sensor without any additional processing and no gamma correction. Well, ACES actually recognizes the raw shot and applies the latest red IPP2 protocol to interpret it correctly. So there's no color space transform necessary, at least for the menu. ACES handles it automatically. In fact, if you try to go to the camera raw section in the project settings and manually change the raw interpretation to IPP2, it won't let you. Those options will be grayed out. So the process is even more automatic with the ACES system. Let's see how this carries over into other tabs. I'll make a new timeline. Make sure both shots are in that. And you can see they still look good. Go to the color tab. And one thing to note about the color tab is if you are using ACES, it's actually not necessary, nor is it a good idea to add a 3D LUT or use an OFX plugin for a color space transform. If you need to create multiple outputs, then you really need to do that through the project settings. Let's say you also need to render it out to P3. We'll go back to the project settings and switch the output to one of your P3 color spaces. So again, not a good idea to add additional color space transform in the color tab. Now, if you need to create a archival master, perhaps a GAM, GAM, a graded archival master, or a NAM, NAM, non-graded archival master, then again, you want to do that through the project settings. Set the device output transform to no output transform in order to keep it in the ACES space. When you change the output color space, one thing you have to think about is what format you're going to render to to capture that full color space. While we're set to no output transform, let's jump back to the deliver tab. 
And here we are, and this is after we've saved the updated project settings. So if we want to render out a GAM or a NAM and capture the full color range, we can't use a standard format such as AVI or QuickTime. What I can do though is select OpenEXR, here it says EXR, and use the 16-bit half floating point architecture. So be aware you do need to change the format to match the output color space. If I needed to render out to Rec. 709, I'd have more choices. For example, I might choose to render out a QuickTime or MPEG-4 to capture that 8-bit data. Many format options, which I can't really go into in this video, but fortunately many platforms and services that you might prepare your project for will have guidelines to assist you. If you'd like to see this project, it's saved out as Alexa Red Aces. So that's Aces. You can see that Aces is more automatic and does the color management for you. Now we haven't talked about how Aces or RCM affects the Fusion tab. There's a few things you need to know about that to make it work correctly. And we'll cover that in the next video.